man who posted almost 24 hours ago on Yahoo Sports a column with the title, Nick Saban needs to stop making excuses and solve Alabama's real problems. He's Pat Forty joining me here on The Rich Ozzie Show. How are you, Pat? Doing great, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fine. So you took Nick Saban's soliloquy as an indication that he's not looking in the mirror, is what you're saying. Yeah, I, I did. And uh, Ian, Ian's right that he's a control freak, but he's a control freak making an excuse, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I thought that this was uh, Saban basically trotting out a reason why, as a, I believe, 15-point favorite, they got housed by an Oklahoma team that really wasn't very good. I'm sorry, that was two years ago by Oklahoma, but last year as an eight-point favorite by Ohio State. That's what I'm getting at. There have been excuses every time they've lost a bowl game uh, under Saban. If, if you go all the way back when Utah beat them in the Sugar Bowl, they weren't motivated. And uh, when Oklahoma beat them, it was a consolation prize game after being taken out of the championship game. So uh, I, there always just seems to be a reason other than we got beat uh, when they lose a bowl game. So what do you think? Is this, though, when you get past it, excuse or not, is this an issue? Moving forward with kids in uh, in college, Pat? well, I, yeah. I mean, I think in an ideal world, um, they would get their draft feedback after their last game, so that they, you know, they, they, their season is done. They will have put all the information out there. First of all, for the play, for teams to evaluate, and then secondly, that they can focus on the next stage of their careers. Uh, but I don't think it's the kind of thing that should necessarily alter their ability to. Uh, focus on a, a national playoff semifinal, uh, at least to the point where they're not going to play hard or not going to try, as Saban was intimating here. So I, I do think that, yeah, there's a better way to do it, but I, I, I'm not buying that it should be the kind of thing that ruins a season. Pat Forty of Yahoo Sports joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So what are, as you call, real problems for Alabama? Because most schools would love to have these problems. It would be sort of It's sort of like needing a to fix a, a couple of things on your yacht to make sure it sails a little bit better. So what yeah, are the no, problems, Pat? It's the biggest, best yacht in college football, but that doesn't mean it doesn't need a little maintenance. Um, the biggest thing, Rich, has been just the defense that has been Nick Saban's calling card year in and year out. They've gotten strafed at the end of the year uh, significantly. I mean, they gave up 42 to Ohio State. They gave up 44 in a win to Auburn. They gave up uh, in the 30s and 40s in the last two games of the previous year to Oklahoma and to Auburn. Uh, they, they have not handled up-tempo offenses and the shift to the more spread-out game very well on that side of the ball. And I think that's the biggest thing they have to fix. They've got to get faster. Uh, they've got to get more adept at playing a, a different style. And, uh, and they've got to, I think, get deeper because they, they, and Saban alluded to it, that he thought his teams were basically worn out at the end of the year. I'm on the phone with uh, Pat Forty of Yahoo Sports joining me here uh, on the program. So uh, what about the Ohio State University? Braxton Miller says, I'm the best athlete in college football. I'm coming back. Uh, you've got Barrett, who did very well last year. He's coming back. And you got Cardell Jones, who's at the ESPYs last night, tweeting at Kendall Jenner saying, I'd love to meet you, essentially. So it's all working right now. When it all when it all comes down to it, who does Urban Meyer do you think uh, put out there under center to start? Wow, it's the most intriguing August quarterback competition ever. I just can't think of it with three guys who have proven they can do it uh, all in the mix. I think I think Cardell Jones, you know, and that that tweet is a little bit of an indication. Yes, he's a fun loving guy, but he's also a little bit of a goofball, and that's not really the Urban Meyer way. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the guy that really fits their M.O. is J.T. Barrett. I mean, he's an alpha male. He's a workaholic. He's, you know, study the film, be there early, stay there late, all about business. Uh, he's probably the least physically gifted of the three, but mostly I think that team, they don't need a freak at quarterback. They need a good quarterback who knows how to turn around and give the ball to Ezekiel Elliott a lot. And so I, I, I kind of think it could be J.T. Barrett when all is said and done. I don't know, Pat. I look at the Jones tweet as him just once again not really understanding the depth of the waters that he's in and trying to succeed in it. Pat, you know, yeah. that's the way no, I viewed I, his tweet at Kendall Jenner. It sort of yeah, was just I, like I mean, last year. I would year. have to think that, that Urban looks at it that way, Maybe too. So. So you've got to be slapping his forehead saying, what are we going to do with this guy? <laughs> so um, when, it's, uh, when, when my team takes the field this year, Pat, University of Michigan, uh, the, the, 
Gosh, the expectation levels through the roof. What would you counsel Michigan Wolverine fans who are so excited about Jim Harbaugh, what a reasonable level of expectation this year would be? What would you counsel those? Yeah, guys? you know, I wouldn't expect to be winning the Big Ten East. Uh, I wouldn't expect to be better than Ohio State by any stretch or probably better than Michigan State. I would be worried as heck about playing Utah in the opener, which on the road, Utah's pretty good. Uh, I, I, I fully expect Michigan to be better and much tougher because, you know, Harbaugh's going to have them a much more physical, tough team uh, than, than Brady Hope did. Uh, I, you know, they'll just be better coached, and they will play, I think, with a greater motivational level than they did with a coach who was a nice guy. And uh, that, that's all not well and good, but Jim Harbaugh won't be a nice guy in August when he's getting that team ready, and they'll be better for it. Yeah, and part of the Nick Saban uh, media availability yesterday, Coach Saban was asked about how Jim Harbaugh held a, uh, a camp right in his backyard in Alabama. That was an interesting choice by Jim Harbaugh, <laughs> right, Pat? Absolutely. Went down to, yeah, to the Bay Area there to Mobile where there is just a ton of prospects year in and year out, and that's who Jim Harbaugh is. I mean, he'll go – he basically says, where's the big dog? Who's the who's – the, schoolyard bully I'll go get him like he did with Pete Carroll when he was at Stanford you know he couldn't wait to tweak him and I think it'll be the same with going after Urban Meyer it'll be the same with going to recruit in the southeast he loves a good fight Pat appreciate you calling in thanks so much my pleasure Rich you bet that's Pat Forty of Yahoo Sports joining me here the Rich Eisen show weekdays at noon eastern on audience